Welcome back to another part in the MVVM Jetpack Compose course for beginners. In this part, we're gonna continue working with snack bars and more specifically, we're gonna tie our snack bar to our scaffold. So in the previous video, we worked with you know snack bar, snack bar host, snack bar host state, all these sort of objects that come with snack bars that make the animations easy. They manage the snack bar queue automatically. Well, there's actually a snack bar host that's built into the scaffold so we can hook it up that way. Let's go into recipe list fragment. And the first thing here is we're gonna delete kind of everything that we worked on in the previous video. So like all this show snack bar stuff, the column, the snack bar host state, basically everything to do with the snack bars that we worked with in the previous video. And now I'm gonna uncomment all of the regular stuff that we had here before. So like our list of data, um, you know, basically everything we had here. We had our like our scaffold, we had our search app bar, and we can come into this lifecycle scope dot launch also, and I'll delete this. So just highlighting that and getting rid of that. We are gonna come back to this if statement later. So I'm gonna actually open up some brackets on this right now and just type all this in because later we, I'm gonna write a little to do here and you know say show the snack bar or whatever because we're gonna come back to that later. So once I've uncommented all of that, come down to the bottom and I can delete our, all this decoupled snack bar, simple snack bar demo. Basically, like I said, everything that we worked on in the previous video. See you later, we don't need that. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start by building a default kind of snack bar that we can reuse for whatever we need to show a snack bar. So go into components, right click and create a new Kotlin file and call this default snack bar. Now once you have this created, I'm gonna minimize this to give you guys lots of room. So we'll annotate this with composable and go function, I'll call it default snack bar, so default snack bar. Now the arguments will be a snack bar host state. That'll be the very first argument because as I said, or as we saw in the previous video, we were working with the snack bar host and snack bar host state, and that kind of manages everything we need with our snack bar. Now we're going to write a modifier. So modifier, modifier, and by default, I'll just set that equal to a new modifier object. Hopefully I got the right import. No, I didn't. See, it automatically already always does the Java Lang import. That's not what I want. I want the compose UI import, so grabbing that one. Now I wanna pass an on dismiss function. It will accept nothing and it will return nothing. This is the function that we're gonna call when we dismiss the snack bar. So once we have that, it looks like I got a warning here because this is experimental. So press Alt Enter, get that, uh, that experimental material API annotation, and now we can build our snack bar. So like we did in the previous video, we start with a snack bar host, and then we pass the snack bar host state as an argument here. Now we need a couple other arguments, so I'll move this to the next line. The next one will be the actual snack bar itself. So say snack bar, and inside of this lambda, we get that snack bar data, which I'll, I'll call it data just to make it a little bit shorter. Now I'm gonna add that snack bar. So create a snack bar, and I hate how Compose does that when you create, like if I create an object, or a composable, and I press enter, and then I press enter as if I wanna to go to the next line. It gets rid of the brackets. I just wanna to go to the next line. I don't wanna get rid of the brackets, come on. All right, so our snack bar, we'll do modifier equals uh, modifier dot padding and 16 DP. Now you might be wondering why I didn't use the modifier up here. This modifier is gonna be for the snack bar host, not for the snack bar that lives inside of the host. So for the snack bar itself, I'm creating a brand new modifier. Now the next parameter inside of our snack bar will be the text. So open this up, we'll do text. First argument is the text itself, and I'll get that from the snack bar data. So I'm gonna say data dot message. Now get that text import from the compose dependency. Now the next argument will be style. I'll just do material theme dot typography and do body number two and then do color and do color dot white. Now I'm not gonna reference our material theme for the color here because if you take a look at our theme, so let me just go and open up our theming file. What I want here is I want my snack bar, the text in the snack bars to always be white. So in my light theme colors and my dark theme colors, there's actually nothing in here that is white in both cases. Well, nothing that makes sense. Like really you should probably do like on surface or something, but this one's white and this isn't. Uh, you could do like maybe, I don't know, one of the on parameters, but none of them are white in both cases. So I want it white in both cases. So I'm just gonna hard code in the color white here. I think that's fine. It's just a snack bar. Now I'm not sure why this is highlighting incorrectly. I'm not sure why this is giving, giving me a warning. It shouldn't be. I'm going to leave it for now and continue on and maybe the error will become obvious to me later on. So I'll just continue on here. Next we need the action. Now I wanna check if the action label is null. So I'm gonna do action label question mark 
dot let and if that action label is not null then I'll pass this variable into the lambda and in that case I want to add a text button here we'll have an on click function to handle like when they click that and for that we're going to call our on dismiss function that whoops on dis on dismiss function that I passed as an argument to the composable up above now other than on click we also want to go inside of the text button and add a text composable so I'll also copy that text composable put it down here but instead of data dot message then here I want to use that action label so again I'm getting a warning here and it as far as I know this should not be giving me a warning but again I will continue on here and maybe as I go through this the error will become obvious to me because it is not obvious to me right now so now inside of the the oh it's because here I have the brackets that's probably why yeah there we go because 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 of that Kotlin convention that's why okay so there our our errors have gone away and everything looks like it's good the last thing that I want to add here to whoops that's the wrong line the last thing that I want to add to this composable is a modifier so do modifier equals the modifier that I'm passing as input and I think that's actually all we need here. We don't need to um, add any other kind of styling to it. But this is how we're going to be like centering it to the bottom of the box that we added into. So that should be it. That's our default snack bar. It's pretty much everything that we went over in the previous video. Same kind of stuff. We have our you know snack bar host state. We're then getting the data from the snack bar host state, um, and then you know getting the action label, getting the message. Pretty much the same stuff we did in the previous video but now we have more a more streamlined composable that we can reuse so now coming to the new stuff now we're going to go into recipe list fragments and we're going to tie our kind of snack bar state and snack bar stuff into the scaffold so first we're going to create a new variable up at the top here called scaffold state and set it equal to remember scaffold state so this will create a scaffold state object and it will persist across recompositions that's why we're using this this constructor remember scaffold state now inside the scaffold it takes an, an argument called scaffold state so I'm gonna do scaffold state equals scaffold state now the next thing here is we need to pass the snack bar host so I can do snack bar host open this up and then I can get that from the scaffold state so I can do scaffold state dot snack bar host state and that's kind of that's pretty much all you need to do to hook up a scaffold to your snack bar host you just you know create that scaffold state object and then specify that hey the snack bar that we're using here is going to be tied to that scaffold state then if i want to show a message or show a snack bar i can come up into our to do that we have up here i'm going to write lifecycle scope like we had before do dot launch because i want to tie this to the fragment scope i obviously want the you know snack bar to go away if the fragment is destroyed so that's why we can use the lifecycle scope now I'm going to do scaffold state snack bar host state and then just call show snack bar like we did before then here's that you know message parameter we have the action label and we also have the duration which we can I think the default of that is short anyway so I'm just going to leave that one out so here the message I'll say I don't know let's say invalid category invalid category uh, let's do colon and then milk so that's what we're clicking on here. Remember, we're clicking on that milk category and that's how we're triggering the snack bar. So I'll, I'll just say like, you know, that's an invalid category, pretending that that's an error of some kind. And uh, that'll be it. So now the last thing here is we just need to actually show the snack bar or add the composable that will show that snack bar. So come down into our scaffold inside the content of the scaffold, go inside of our box composable and down at the bottom of the box composable down below the circular indeterminate progress bar. Here I will just add the you know default, uh, whoops, default uh, snack bar that we just created. Now the parameters are the snack bar host state and then that on dismiss function. So the snack bar host state is pretty easy. We just go scaffold state dot uh, snack bar host state pretty easy it's pretty straightforward and then on dismiss we want to open this up do scaffold state snack bar host state dot current snack bar data question mark dot dismiss so we're checking if that data is null if it's not then we dismiss that snack bar oh actually one last thing that i did forget to do is we need to add that modifier so if i don't add this modifier then the snack bar is not going to be aligned to the bottom obviously we want it aligned to the bottom so i'm going to write modifier dot align and then open this up and do alignment dot center bottom or bottom center so 
this is one thing I didn't show you about the box is you can really, you can pretty much align things wherever you want in the box. Like they don't have the same restrictions as a row and a column do. Like with a row, you can only really align things uh, vertically with a column. You can only align things horizontally, but in a box, you can put things anywhere. So the modifier, I can do dot align and then do bottom center. So I'm both aligning it vertically and horizontally in this case, I, I guess with a box, it doesn't matter because everything is just on top of each other. So it really doesn't matter like how you align things. I, I'm, that's my guess anyway. So now let's uh, let's run this and take a look and see if our snack bar is working and it's tied to our scaffold. All right, so I'll click on milk and boom, there is our snack bar. If I click hide, it gets hidden. So if I click this again, uh, it does get shown, but what happens if I click it one more time while one is showing? Okay, so that's good. The queue system is, is working. You saw that that snack bar kind of briefly went away and then a new one came. So just to show you that one more time, I'm gonna click this twice. So one, two. So after a few seconds, the first one will fade away and then a new one will come into view. So that looks really good. That's, that's effectively doing what we want it to do. So personally, I actually don't really like that this, that it does that, that it will like, you know, if you click it twice, it will the duration will expire and then it will show the next one. Personally, I don't really like that. I think for most scenarios, what makes more sense is if, if I click this, if I clicked it once and then clicked it again, what I think should happen is this should hide and then the new one should come on top of it. Of course, this is up to you and it depends on your app specifications, but that's just what I think personally. So I'm gonna show you a way that we can implement a system like that just by building kind of a separate little, uh, I guess, manager or controller that will manage um, that behavior. So go over to the project view here and inside of the util package, create a new file, a new Kotlin file and call this snack bar controller. And this is totally, you know, optional, by the way, this isn't something that you're going to need with, with every project. This is just, like I said, this is something that I prefer. I'll show you the behavior and then you can tell me if you like it or not. Oh, you know what? It's actually in the finished version of the app. So let me just, I'll just launch the finished version of the app and show you. So watch what happens when I click this milk button multiple times. So if I click it once, it shows. If I click it again, the old one is hidden and the new one shows. That's the behavior that I'm going to show you how to implement right now. I'm going to show you how to build a controller that kind of does that for us. So say class snack bar controller and open this up. We are going to need an argument for this. Do private value scope and this will be a coroutine scope object. And by the way, if you don't know much about coroutines or if you don't know like anything at all, I actually made a great beginner video uh, on coroutines and I'll put a little card up in the up in the top here. Also, I'll just show it to you really quickly on YouTube. So let's go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash coding with Mitch. So if you go to, uh, this is actually a really small view. Let me shrink this a little bit. So if you go to the far right here, there should be like a little search right here. Just search for uh, scope or coroutine scope or something like that. I have this video Kotlin coroutines beginner example. And again, I'll put a card up at the top. Hopefully I'll remember to put a card up at the top. If you don't know anything about coroutines, that is definitely a great video to watch. So check that one out. Now we need a global variable in here called private variable snack bar job. This job will be nullable and by default it will be set to null. Whoops, I meant to do job and then question mark and get that, get that, uh, get that import there. Now I want to do init. And actually I'll come back to init because we need to build a function that we're actually gonna call in init first. First I'll build a getter function for the scope. So just call it get scope and set it equal to the scope. I'm building that because that way in the fragment I can access that same scope and use that to launch coroutines. Now the next one is gonna be the show snack bar function. So this will take the scaffold state as input. So scaffold state, the next argument will be the message that needs to be shown. And the third one will be the action label. So action label, and that will also be a string. Now open this up and we can use the scaffold state and just use it like we regularly would. The only difference here is, is I'm gonna make some, write some logics that says, if the snack bar job equals null, so if there is no currently active job, then I wanna create a job. So I'm gonna say snack bar job equals the coroutine scope that we passed as a constructor argument to this class, scope.launch, and then say scaffold state dot snack bar host state, show snack bar, and then I can pass the same arguments that I would do before. So message equals message and action label equals the action label. Now it's giving me a warning here because I probably forgot the experimental annotation. So let me press alt enter and grab that. So that's what we wanna do if there's no currently active job, but what if there is an active job? So let's write else and do snack bar job. Actually, I'll just copy this. 
and it's this is going to seem a little weird to use because I'm doing the exact same thing, but the magic is going to be in the other function that I use. So coming down below, we're going to leave that for now. Just do private function cancel active job. That'll take nothing and return nothing. Now check if that snack bar job is null. So snack bar job dot let just do job, pass that into the Lambda. So if that job is not null, then I wanna cancel it and then create a brand new job. So basically this is like a reset function. If there is an active job, cancel it and then create a new job. That's, that's essentially the behavior that we want, remember? If we take a look at the finished version of the app, basically you could think of this as an active job, but if I want a new one to show and I click this again, we're essentially canceling the old one and then creating a new one. So that's sort of like, that's what this function is, is all about. We're canceling whatever one is currently running then creating a new one. So now coming up into our if else logic, we can use this cancel uh, canceled active jobs function. So in this top case, if there is no currently active job, we can just run the job and then, and then we kind of reset things. So at the end of that, we're canceling the jobs and creating a new one. In the else case, if there is an active job, in other words, we want to cancel it. So that means like if there's already a snack bar showing, we want to hide it. So that's why I'm canceling. Then we want to show the snack bar and then at the end we can cancel. So that means like kind of clear everything, kind of reset everything. So this, this case is the exact same as this case. The only difference is this cancel active job call before showing the snack bar. And that's the behavior that we want. Let me just remind you again. So if there is one showing, when I click this again, I want that to get canceled and a new one gets shown. Now let's scroll up to the top and the last thing is just build an init function. Inside of init, I'm just gonna call cancel active jobs because if this object gets recreated or you know anything weird happens that it, I don't think of basically as the developer, when this is recreated, I just wanna make sure I start with a clean slate. So I'm calling cancel active job inside of init. Now to use this, it's quite simple. We're just gonna go into recipe list fragment. Scroll up to the very top and do private value we'll do snack bar controller and set that equal to snack bar controller and then for the constructor argument for that coroutine scope here's where i'm going to use that life cycle scope so we're still kind of tying everything to the scope of the fragment or to the life cycle of the fragment that way any any you know snack bars that are showing if the fragment is destroyed those are also going to be you know cleaned up and destroyed so now inside of this or using this snack bar controller object i can come down to here instead of using lifecycle scope i can call snack bar con controller dot scope or dot get scope which is the same thing but it's just making sure that i'm getting you know i'm guaranteed that i'm getting the same scope i'm using the same scope to launch the job and now instead of calling uh, scaffold state here, I can just get rid of this and I can use snack bar controller. So snack bar controller, and then just call show snack bar. Now it's giving me a warning here because I need to pass also the scaffold state as an argument. So just say scaffold state equals the scaffold state. It looks like I have an extra comma there and I'm missing a comma right there. So that is, uh, that's it. That should give us the desired behavior. So again, this is totally optional, but this is just something that I, I think this looks better personally. I think it's more logical or I don't know, a better user experience. So anyway, I ran the app. Now let's go take a look. There's it launching. Let's click milk. Looks like we don't get it showing. So it's not showing at all. Let's go into the snack bar controller. And oh, I think this is the problem here. So here, I, uh, the way I've called this cancel active jobs, I'm calling it outside of the coroutine. So it's gotta be inside here because this suspends and this waits, this does not wait. That was my mistake. This will suspend and wait. So when that's complete, then we're canceling the job. So really, so what I was doing there was I was starting the job and then canceling it immediately. So that's why it was never showing. So this should work now. Also, this one will have to be cut and put inside here. So both of these should be good now. So just making sure that it's inside that coroutine, inside of the launch function. So now let's run that again and hopefully we're good to go. All right, so there's the app launching. Let's click on milk. There's our snack bar. Now let's click it again. That one gets hidden, that one gets shown. Click it again. So I could do this all day. Every time I click it, the old one gets hidden, the new one gets shown. As soon as I wait for this delay, so I'll wait a few seconds, there you can see that it is completely gone. So again, this is uh, you know totally optional. This is just a little mechanism that I prefer, but it, you know, depending on your app, depending on the thing that's happening in your app, this might not make sense. It might make sense. It's totally up to you. That's gonna be it for this video. I think in the next video, I haven't planned out the lecture yet, but I think in the next video, we're now ready to move on to the recipe fragment stuff. So that means whenever we you know click on a recipe, it should take us to the next fragment. 
and that fragment is going to be recipe fragment. So don't, you know, hold me to this. I'm going to go plan the lectures right now, but I think that's what we're ready to do. As always, thanks for watching. Leave some engagement and absolutely do not forget that like. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, what are you still doing here? The video is over. Well, since you're still here, I guess I'll show you the best Android courses that exist on the planet. I got all kinds of high quality courses. If you scroll on down on the homepage, there's the Jetpack Compose one that you're watching right now. There's that course. We have MVI architecture. If you've ever been curious about that, we have my classic powerful Android apps with Jetpack architecture. This shows you everything from, uh, well, the focus on this one is pretty much database caching. caching. We get data from a real API, we cache it, we uh, basically design an app to work when there's no network connection. That is what this project is all about. We have some UI testing, another UI testing, Hilt, which uh, we actually went over in this course. We got clean architecture. This one's probably the best, this is definitely the best course on my website. If you are a professional or you are looking to get into the industry, the skills that you learn in this course are absolutely fundamental. This will give you a big edge in any job environment, whether you're applying or you're already at a job and you want to just improve your skills. This is a really, really, really high quality course. It's hard. Your, your brain might explode while watching it, but you will learn a lot. You'll learn a lot of really, really fundamental skills you know, anything from getting data from the network, caching data, designing different layers, abstracting out the different layers so that you can write unit tests, uh, espresso tests, so UI tests, dagger, navigation components, everything. It's beautiful. Definitely this is the best course on the website.